I'm finally back in the swing of things. It has been a very erratic couple of weeks with you know things happening behind the scenes of the family. Uh, my mother's making progress for those asking. It's still a long road to recovery, but uh, here's hoping everything is good. But you know, during the middle of all that, I got sick. And you guys heard that during the Sonic Hacking Contest live stream showcase. So I was coughing, wheezing, sneezing. It was, I don't know what the end of 2019 was exactly. Still having to have processing it all. But despite all that, the show must go on. It's the holidays. It's the time to be cheerful. And um, who could be more bright and cheery than the Kirby franchise? Okay then, we're back with Kirby, and now we're heading into the NES with Kirby's Adventure, released about a year after Dreamland for the Game Boy. Pretty late release for the console, 1993? The Super Nintendo was already close to uh, two years since launch, and here's this man making a first party Nintendo game for the previous generation. But I guess it wasn't an uncommon practice, Capcom was still releasing classic Mega Man games for the NES well into 1994, if my review of Mega Man 6 is anything to go by. It's just, you would think that when a new console is out in the middle of this big 16-bit console war, all hands would be on deck for the current gen. Our story this time involves all the inhabitants of Dreamland suddenly finding themselves uh, unable to dream while sleeping. Concerned, Kirby heads to the Fountain of Dreams, home of the fabled Star Rod, just to see if everything is okay, but to his confusion, he instead finds King Dedede having the time of his life bathing in the fountain's pool. King Dedede has taken the Star Rod, broken into pieces, and left each piece in the hands of one of his goons. If you read the manual, we actually get a bit of foreshadowing here because King Dedede claims that he was just doing everyone a favor by breaking the rod, but Kirby then storms off to retrieve the rod before the king can clarify what he means, and sure enough, by the end of the game, you find out exactly what he meant, for as soon as Kirby reconstructs the Star Rod, a dark force suddenly springs out of it known as Nightmare, who wants to plunge Dreamland the whole galaxy into eternal darkness. Now you defeat him shortly after that, but I like that twist. King DDD didn't need to get his monkey taint juice all over the fountain, but he ultimately had the best intentions in mind for everyone in Dreamland, and it's only because of Kirby's hot-headedness that we got into this mess. Now I don't know why none of DDD's goons just didn't tell Kirby, hey not Zack, we're trying to keep this evil spirit at bay, chill dude, but I guess the king's goons aren't the brightest of the bunch, all except for Meta Knight here who makes his debut in this game. I'm mysterious and aloof swordsman that may or may not have his own agenda. Every once in a while, he actually helps you out by giving you some invincibility candy to rush through enemies like a bat out of hell. But then he goes and summons his lackeys against you on several occasions, so he's likely testing Kirby to see if he's worthy or some other shit. When you get to his boss fight, he won't even face you unless you pick up the sword he leaves you on the ground. And you can leave him hanging there all day and he won't budge an inch. He wants a fair fight? Fuck it, I'll fight when I'm ready. My noodles are done. Now, what I always find intriguing about Meta Knight is that when you beat him, his mask falls off, and he has a face that looks like Kirby, so are they the same species? Are they related? What's going on there? Is he still waiting over there? He is? Good, fuck him. But you go and defeat Nightmare, and dreams are brought back to Dreamland, restoring peace to all. From what I understand, this is something the Kirby series does a lot, having a menacing dark force act as the final boss, and I, I guess it can't be helped because sure, King DDD is a jerk, but he's not a full out tyrant to act as a major ongoing threat. He's no Bowser, he's no Ganon, he's not even a Dr. Eggman, so I can see why they feel the need to do this. Of course, also talking as someone who hasn't played most of these games, so maybe I'm just uneducated in this area, we'll find out in due time. Well, Kirby's adventure may have been made for an inferior console, but the level of detail and sprite quality is once again second to none for this kind of technology, easily one of the best looking platformers on the Nintendo with a ton of charming personality beaming throughout. From Kirby's well animated design, the enemies you encounter, the cute interface that shows Kirby demonstrating his special powers, all those fun little interludes that play when you enter a new world, although gonna cry foul here on the second world intro, how is Kirby dreaming if there are currently no dreams, huh? Huh? Is this a fucking children's game? Sadly for as great as the game looks, and it does look great, it's also fond of lag and it can get pretty bad at times. You can only be so ambitious with the game's graphics considering the system's limitations, but I stress the game is still more than playable, it's just make sure you're aware of that. Although from what I hear, the 3D classic version on the 3DS removes all the lag entirely. So if you're thinking of getting one version of the 8-bit original, you should probably get that one. Besides Dreamland, this was one of the only Kirby games I ever played before this marathon. But uh, I say that, I wouldn't play Kirby's Adventure until it was released on the virtual console for the Nintendo Wii, so around 2000 and eight for me personally. What can I say, I just wasn't big on the dude, despite his adorableness. I did always like how the game began as soon as you booted up the system. You get a quick little tutorial on how you can draw Kirby, you know, perfect for the kids. A circle for a body, two stubs for hands, two stubs for feet, and voila, it's Kirby. They can draw him, you can draw him, uh, except Kirby. 
Low self-esteem, maybe. As I said in the Dreamland review, this was the game to introduce Kirby's famous copy ability. You put an enemy in your mouth and by pressing down on the D-pad, you get their special ability to use at your leisure. Not every enemy has a special skill to use, but it's very obvious which ones do. Basically, if they do more than just walk back and forth, you can copy what they do, and this game gives you a lot to choose from. A common complaint about the first game was that there was little variation in how you could approach it. You had some basic power-ups, but you see everything the game has to offer in about 20-30 minutes, and that's including both a normal and extra mode playthrough of the game. Masahiro Sakurai introduced the copy ability to give players a ton of replayability. A surplus of skills to experiment with not only as a means for offense, but also as a means of progressing through the stage. A flamethrower for continuous damage, a wheel that lets you dash across terrain, a traditional sword, a sword that you can toss like a boomerang. They don't all hit the mark, and a few do feel a bit redundant, like I don't see much difference in the sword and hammer besides one being a sword and the other being a hammer, but who knows, hammers might be more of your aesthetical preference, and they break certain blocks to get some hidden collectibles, so there's some differences. And there's still a ton of skills to go around anyway, so you're bound to find a handful you really enjoy. For me, my favorites are always Spark, Fire, Backdrop, and UFO. The UFO is kind of cheating because it's deliberately overpowered, but extremely rare. I love Spark because if it's 360 degree covered, it's quick to activate too, so no matter if I'm climbing up or falling down, I have a means to reliably attack things. Fire is just a flamethrower, uh, that doesn't require much explanation. You thought Wispy Woods was a pushover before, but this is, this is like attacking a tree in real life. Backdrop is a little more quirky, considering you need to suck up enemies before you can use it. But after that, you can give enemies a body slam in multiple directions. The progenitor of Kirby's directional throws in Smash Brothers. A little unorthodox, but immensely satisfying to pull off. You can get the UFO skill as early as the first stage if you know where to look, but if you're unlucky, the UFO enemy can tackle you the moment you load into the room and then you have to reset the game for it to respawn. Yeah, you gotta reset the whole thing just to get another chance. That's a little weird, especially considering that every other enemy in this game has no problem respawning the moment you slightly off-screen them. Oh yeah, this game has that old-school Mega Man problem. It was likely deliberate so that you always have a means to grab a copy ability, but say you already have a skill you like, it's surprisingly easy to get snipe from something that just pops in your view or worse from up above. This game has a couple of instances where things can just fall on top of you from off screen and it's so fucking irritating. Doubly so when you have a skill you really like because when you get hit, you drop your copy ability, take too long to get it back and it goes poof lost until you can get it again later. I remember this part where you need to use a fire ability to light this fuse and make a mad dash to this cannon before it blows up to get some extra goodies, but right above you are Waddle Dees and Waddle Doos that always respawn and fall on top of your ass while you're flying upwards, where it's next to impossible to defend yourself. Not only does this slow you down, but you also gotta waste time getting your fire skill back so you can light the fuse again. This is one of the worst case scenarios of this and it's not always this bad, but holy shit is it frustrating regardless. This game is still a walk in the park for the most part. It's a little harder than Dreamland to compare it to something, and Enemies are mostly harmless individually, it's only when they throw a whole bunch at you at once that you have to take it easy a bit. But still, they give you more than enough healing items in the form of tomatoes and, uh, a tomato juice? Soda? I don't know what these are. It's also incredibly easy to stock up on lives. At the end of every stage, you play this mini game where you time your button press just right and launch Kirby to the stars. Manage to get to the top and you get an extra life, and it's pretty simple to do consistently in my opinion. But outside of that, there's also several things you can do outside of levels to get lives and power-ups. You can play this crane game to score extra lives, you can stuff Kirby's bottomless gut with eggs and get lives that way as long as you don't swallow any bomb. What the hell is this game? You can visit these museums to grab a certain power-up on command, or you can battle a mini boss in this arena to get those extra fancy power-ups like the hammer I mentioned earlier and something like the microphone screen nuke. Ah! Still, if I can give you some advice, don't rush through things. Even though the game's level design might look like it encourages speedy tactics, they even give Kirby a ground dash this time to go double speed, take your time. I've always had a reckless streak in my playing style, true, but I was caught off guard on how much momentum Kirby carries in his jumps. Don't go dash jumping everywhere because you'll lose health fast. Holding on to your skill of choice is essential in making the rest of the game a total breeze, and nothing sucks more than getting hit and wasting time scrambling to get your power up back. Though if you really want to, you don't have to copy any skills. You can totally play this game like the original Dreamland, uh, sucking up enemies and spitting them back out as projectiles. In some cases, that's actually a better strategy because those stars you puke out pack a really big punch against bosses. And in those cases where Meta Knight 6 is cheerleading squad at you, the best means of defeating them is Kirby's powerful SUCK! You're still also capable of flying indefinitely, and occasionally the best course of action is to simply fly over things. Though most of the course design is relatively confined, so this can only help you so much. No matter how you approach it, you're looking at a much bigger game than the original Dreamland. It's still only about 2-3 to three hours long, but hey, that easily beats out the half hour Game Boy game. 
On top of having more worlds to explore along with more stages within those worlds, the game also gives you reason to go back with the surplus of abilities at your disposal, you know, as long as you eat the right enemy. And there's even a little more emphasis on exploration. Take some time to explore, you're likely to find some extra lives, maybe a rare power-up like the UFO, or you can find these hidden switches that open up more minigames in the hub world, so that you can access more lives and skills. If you manage to find every secret switch, you unlock this game's extra mode, though compared to Dreamland, which gave you new enemies to face and new boss patterns to deal with, this game's definition of extra mode is just cutting your health in half and removing the ability to save your progress. Stages and enemies are completely unchanged, so that's disappointing. So disappointing that I didn't feel the need to even finish extra mode. That is until I played the 2002 remake on the Game Boy Advance, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. I'm guessing this was made to coincide with the release of Kirby Right Back At You, seeing as that also debuted in 2002, and the American box art looks like they just pulled two promotional assets from the anime and stuck them on the box. Looks pretty cheap, but thankfully the game itself is anything but. This is a great update of the NES game. It's basically if Kirby's Adventure got the Super Mario All-Stars treatment, so while the base game is still relatively short, it at least looks and sounds a lot better. The graphics are beautifully rendered, sound design is top notch, it's an improvement in just about every category and is definitely my preferred way of playing the game. You can even play the story together with friends in simultaneous co-op. You know, you just need that octopus of a link cable system and actual friends. Shouldn't be too hard. <clears throat> I don't know if the Wii U Virtual Console release has multiplayer. I'm gonna assume not since the store page says one player, so you're gonna have to fetch an original cartridge if you want to get your multiplayer action on. They changed up the minigames for the hub world. There's this one where you're playing hot potato with the, the live bomb and frying pans? I mean, what the fuck? There's also this one where you grind on a rail and try to get first place by knowing when to time your button presses to avoid obstacles. Even for Kirby, I find this one pretty mindless and automated. All of these feel more multiplayer centric, so maybe if I played these with friends they'd be better, but alone, they're pretty dull. The Samurai game is alright at least, I was always a fan of the reflex test to see how fast you can react. But I even consider this a step down from the original where it was you against a series of opponents in a classic Wild West duel. It gets insanely strict the more you win, but seeing Kirby progress through a gun, a bazooka, to a fucking cannon is pretty damn hilarious. So if you go out of your way to complete extra mode in this version, you unlock Meta Nightmare Mode, a time attack where, for the first time ever if I'm not mistaken, you can play as Meta Knight. Despite possibly being the same species as Kirby, he can't copy abilities. Or I don't know, maybe he chooses not to? Uh, sucking can be so uncivilized. Instead, Meta Knight relies on his sword to get the job done, and in good hands, it can wreck everything. Bosses, common fodder, stage hazards, it takes care of it all, and it has some damn decent range. He's also about twice as fast as Kirby, both vertically and horizontally, so his mobility is top tier, but he only has three health points, so he's damn fragile. And you recall what I said earlier about the whole taking your time thing because enemies can swarm you and they can find level design can make it easy to run into things if you're not careful enough? Yeah, that can be a little trickier to do when you're controlling someone as nimble and delicate as Meta Knight. It's easy to lose yourself and die as this dude, but he's still fun to play as. I'm bummed that this game's extra mode isn't of the same caliber as Dreamland on the Game Boy, but this is a good incentive for finishing it at least. I'm all for playing as other characters in extra modes because that's more bang for my buck, and Nightmare in Dreamland certainly doesn't disappoint. There's still merit in playing the NES original, if anything, just to admire the kind of graphical fidelity how Laboratory managed to achieve on the hardware. But in every other case, you're better off just getting the GBA remake. Beautiful to look at, very simple to pick up and play, it's a Kirby game after all. And there's plenty to keep you coming back with all the power-ups and meta nightmare mode, despite the short length. Okay, so from this point, I'm going to be combining a bunch of video games together for future videos because now that we got the copy ability done and over with, I feel like additional add-ons and gimmicks from this point onward won't have the same kind of impact and thus won't take as much time to explain. So next time for this marathon specifically, we got a triple decker. Uh, we're going back to the Game Boy for Kirby Streamland 2. Then we're finally going to the Super Nintendo with Kirby Superstar and by proxy Superstar uh, Ultra for the DS. And then finally Kirby's Dreamland 3. Three games, three and a half, I guess. So much Kirby, so little time. But first, we have to head back to Resident Evil. Such a bizarre juxtaposition, I'm aware, but I love it. <laughs> so thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night and take care. He's a man of many, many faces. He may be pink, but it's really dangerous. Every